So Leela, um, Leela Buttery, what's the what's the download on gluten? I really would like to know like the doubt like why do I feel the way I feel when I eat gluten? I don't feel good. Okay, so gluten is not bad. It's 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 actually fine for you, mm -hmm. but it's the excessive amounts of gluten that are bad for you. So when you go to the store and you buy like a typical Merida white bread or French bread loaf, that mm -hmm. is made from a grain that is a hybridized grain that's that's grown here in the U.S. And so to be able to grow here in the U.S. and mass produce them, they produce it in areas that have infertile soils. So they've mm -hmm. hybridized a grain that um, that has a higher gluten content as a result of that hybridization. Mm -hmm. And the reason for the hybridization is so that it can grow in those infertile soils. So this is why when you go to Europe and you eat pasta and bread and you're like, all I ate was pasta and bread and lots of it and I felt great. And you're like, I come back here and I eat just one piece of bread and I feel so bloated. The reason why is because those are original old world grains mm -hmm. and those old world grains have natural levels of gluten, which your body can process. Your body has a receptor that can process gluten, um, but just not excess amounts. So when you get that excess amount, your body, the receptor takes that gluten and then it says, oh no, there's a lot more of it. Mm -hmm. What do we do? And it begins to build antibodies and attack itself and treat it like poison and so when your body treats something like poison that it doesn't know what to do with it creates inflammation so that's the bloating that we feel it creates indigestion constipation uh, IBS and these autoimmune diseases in excess and you can imagine that if you have that for breakfast lunch and dinner day after day seven days a week how your body feels and so these are the reasons why if you're going to choose a bread here in the US I highly recommend choosing spelt because spelt is an old grain that can only be grown in highly fertile soils and has natural levels of gluten, or getting a sprouted loaf or something that is grain-free. Um, mana has great lines of the mana bread lines that are really good, um, gluten-free. But also remember, you don't have to be afraid of gluten. You just have to be afraid of uh, unnatural levels of gluten, high gluten levels. Thanks, Leela. You're welcome. I never knew that. I thought all gluten was like the devil and really bad for me. It's one of the top four allergens in the U.S. and wow. that's due to hybridization. What are the other, um, soy, soy, okay, albumin and casein. Where does, what's albumin and what's casein? Albumin is found in eggs. Mm -hmm. It's the white part of the egg. And the reason why that's an allergen as well is, is due to mutation again. So when eggs are mass produced by chickens, Chickens are mainly in feedlots, and they're given GMO soy and corn. And that's not what an a, a chicken eats. A chicken should be eating grubs. Um, when you go to the store and you see all natural, total vegetarian diet on your egg carton, that is the complete opposite of what the chicken should be eating. The chicken should be eating little bugs and worms. They're not vegetarians. And so that's the opposite of what you want. You don't want them eating grains and uh, soy and corn. So when they eat those genetically modified soy and corn in feedlots, even if it's all natural and even if it's organic, it's not what they should be eating. So it creates a mutation in their protein and that protein is the albumin. So then when you go to eat that incredible edible egg, it's not as good for you because the protein albumin has now denatured and also mutated. And again, you don't recognize that naturally in your body. So what does your body do? It's a big red alert, and it's poison, so your body attacks it. So again, you get the inflammation, the IBS, the autoimmune diseases. Mm -hmm. um, then the other one is casein, and casein is found in milk. It is the protein that's found in milk. And so and here in the U.S., uh, we've hybridized our cows, and so rarely you can – this is outside of pasteurization, outside of everything else. This is just the cow itself. When you find a hybridized cow – it has a mutation in the casein protein. So it turns from a beta A2 casein to a beta A1 casein. And beta A2 casein is what you find in breast milk. It's what you find in goat's milk and sheep's milk and old world cow milk. And that casein protein, we have a receptor for as humans, so we can process and break it down. The casein beta A1 casein, which is in the hybridized cow, we don't have a receptor for. So therefore, 
what do we do? We see it as poison. We create inflammation. We create indigestion. We try and get rid of it because it's a poison to our body and we don't know how to break it down. So that casein has been directly linked to autism and other uh, terrible autoimmune diseases, ADHD mm -hmm. and things like this in, in children. And so that's why they say the uh, raw milk or the old world cow milk that doesn't ha or the goat's milk that has the beta A2 casein is much better for people in these cases. So again, this is another allergy. And finally, of course, the soy is the fourth of the largest allergies. And that is because soy is not only hybridized in the US, but it's also genetically modified to be retardant to um, pesticides um, here in the US. So by changing its genetic makeup, it's creating a mutation in that soy protein. And so again, our bodies don't know how to to process it. Soy also has many phytoestrogens, so it tends to mess with um, the hormone balance in, in people. So uh, in excess, it so can make people more feminine. Well, not necessarily. It just it just can turn. It can make it can make your cycle get off balance. Um, in in whatever ways, you know, estrogen is a naturally occurring hormone, obviously. But but having too much of any of your you want to balance. I mean, our, our lives are all about balance, and so your progesterone, estrogen, estrogen, and all your hormones, you want to be balanced. So you don't ever want to have an imbalance in these things. And so definitely, like, a lot of vegetarians are having a kind of a uh, soy is their main protein. And so when you get just all that soy, you're also getting just a lot of phytoestrogens, and so that can definitely have an effect on, on your hormone mm -hmm. balance. Uh, so it's important to research these things also to know that you know, you look at Asian cultures and you're like, wow, they eat all that soy, but they have a non-hybridized old world soy. Mm -hmm. They also eat it as a condiment where it's just in soy sauce or it's in a little bit in the miso soup, but it's not their sole soy source of, of protein. Uh, so that's the difference. And also they're not messing with it genetically. So we see a, a big difference in, in like the old world grains and proteins and, uh, eating habits than we have today here in the United States that's being messed with on a daily basis. So what do people eat? Like what do we eat if we can't have this um, overly processed bread that comes from non-old world grains that are hybridized and have like an overabundance of gluten in them and we don't drink the milk and we can't have the soy. Like what do we like? So if these, these are the top four allergens that most affect people in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And so, as far as the eggs are concerned, eggs are really, really good for you. But don't buy the eggs in the store that say that they're all vegetarian eggs. Buy farm fresh eggs, you know, know your farmer, know what they feed, know that the, uh, that the chickens are out grazing and they're pastured and they're getting to grub, they're getting to peck around. That's what chickens do. They dig around in the dirt, they find little bugs in there, they find little worms in there, and they eat it. That's their diet. You know, and if they're supplemented, they're supplemented with oyster shell or their or, um, egg shells, and that helps their calcium content, help, helps them produce stronger shells. And then they also can supplement with a feed, but make sure that it's, if, if they are getting a supplemented feed, that it's not a, um, a, a, a GMO um, hybridized corn and soy feed, because that's what we have here in the U.S. So we don't, mm. I don't want to eat the eggs that the chicken had that as their sole diet. So, so just researching where your food is coming from. Exactly. Go to the farmer, buy local, buy support them, mm -hmm. and buy buy their eggs. And same with the milk. You know, go and ser search out a Jersey Guernsey cow if you want cow milk that that um, is an old world cow. You know, because these other ones um, they're directly linked to diabetes and, and inflammation. And so like the ones with the spots on them that were like. We right, the Holstein cows knowing. that you're thinking about, mm -hmm. yeah, is a hybridized cow. And um, the Jersey Guernsey cow is the original old world cow, and that's mm -hmm. kind of what you want. You don't want this mutated um, casein protein in your body. And, you know, if not, go with goat's milk or go with sheep's milk and seek out those farms if that's what you're looking for. Or, you know, there's other alternatives of milk, hemp milk, almond milk, rice milk, you know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of milk products out there. Um, but, you know, a lot of people look to milk at for those nutrients. So if you're a milk drinker, that's what you should definitely seek out. And then as far as the breads, you know, you can, you can get spelt bread. Uh, definitely you can sprout your own. I mean, I sprout spelt berries and grind it in the Vitamix and make, make some bread, you know, put your hands in some dough. That's great. And then, uh, what was the third, the, the final soy. Soy just realized that you want to get non-GMO soy, um, and remember to use it not as a sole 
source of your pro of, of your protein in your diet, but just as you know, an enhancement of your diet, a uh, source of protein. Wow, thanks, Leela Buttery. You're welcome. Next time, mm -hmm. I guess a good topic will be um, meat. Meat, okay. Because there's so many people who are vegetarian and vegans who are desperately opposed to the consumption of meat. Sure. So we'll like get your take on that next time. Definitely. We awesome. Can, we can explore that next time. All right, thank you. Woo-hoo. Woo. -hoo. Woo.